Wow! Falcon and Winter Soldier might have been light on end credit sequences to get people chatting. Although I told you they were supposed to have one with Zemo being recruited for Thunderbolts by General Ross and Yelena Belova, amongst others. But that has, uh, from what I hear, been moved to Black Widow because they switched the order of release. And they didn't want Yelena Belova to be introduced that way. But yeah, the series ended up being light on end credit sequences. But this is sure a good way to get people talking about the future of Sam Wilson, and that's that he's getting his very own movie. This morning, this morning, I asked that question. Will Sam Wilson's cap continue uh, to fly steady on Disney Plus, or will he soar into his own big screen adventure? And as I as I intimated, it would look kind of bad if he didn't get a movie. Uh, you know, especially after all this talk about him earning it, and you know, not only himself feeling that he was worthy of it, but not caring if other people felt that way. Too bad for them. But you know, he needs to have a movie if he's truly going to be cap and he's getting one we have our answer the hollywood reporter is reporting that falcon and winter soldier head writer malcolm spellman is developing captain america 4 that the title alone that it's captain america 4 starring sam wilson is so exciting it's such a big deal too we're going to talk about that uh but first the details so they're not a lot but uh dallin muson is going to be the co-writer he's actually one of the few white writers who worked on the show uh and he wrote last week's episode five a mighty powerful episode. We even talked about how good the writing was there. I would love for um, Derek Kolstad, who does the John Wick movies and wrote episodes two and three, um, to also factor in, because he, he does a good job, I think, with some of the fight sequences. Uh, now, to be fair, Wanda is also headed back to the big screen, appearing in Marvel's multiverse films as a key player, as her series kicked that off, although very subtly. But still, she has a, a big screen future as well. But what's important here, the important distinction, is that Sam Wilson, again, is getting his own movie. And, it's a, and, a, and a major Marvel franchise is switching lead characters, something that they have never done before. This is going to be a big test case for whether or not Iron Man, Thor, and the other movies can also switch lead characters. Like Riri Williams and her, her team are going to be looking to see how this does because, you know, what's going to happen with... Uh, Iron, future Iron Man movies. It's very interesting. You know, Marvel Comics tried to switch up the lead characters. You know, Lady Thor is going to be showing up uh, in Thor Ragnar, uh, Thor Love and Thunder, although Thor is still a major player there, so she's not technically replacing him. Uh, but Marvel Comics tried to do this, and it did not work out. So, but, you know, Kevin Feige seems to be able to do anything. So this is very, very exciting. Although the Marvel comics, to be, to be fair, weren't particularly well written. But Malcolm Spellman and Carrie Scogland, I'll just say it now, I want her to direct. I think she should level up too. She directed every single episode of this show. and We often felt that it was very cinematic. But the talent here is key. So this is very, very exciting. And I'm curious, do you think they can switch over to a new, a new, um, a new lead for an established Marvel franchise. I think they can, because Falcon and Winter Soldier was just so darn successful. Nielsen uh, has just uh, announced yesterday that in its second week, Falcon and Winter Soldier has already hit number one of all original streaming shows that are currently airing. That's something WandaVision was never able to do. It's also Disney Plus's Falcon and Winter Soldier is Disney's Disney Plus's biggest series debut to date across the board. That means bigger than The Mandalorian's uh, seasons one and two as well. This just shows what a successful Disney Plus show can do for someone's career. Everyone's going to want to get Disney Plus now. Oh, I love it. Now, this movie, Captain America 4, is in development. There's no director, Carrie Scogland. There's no director. There's no hint of a release date. It's very early days. But that's not going to stop us from speculating about what it might include. Because there are a heck of a lot of clues in Falcon and Winter Soldier. All right, so there are the obvious supporting Captain America players, like Bucky. I'm a little torn on this. I would like Sam to prove that he can fly solo, quite frankly, but everybody loves Bucky, and he offered some major assists to Steve Rogers, too. So I can see, and they, I can see Marvel wanting to recapture the magic of the show. They're like, people liked Falcon and Winter Soldier, so now they're going to want to see Captain America and Winter Soldier. So, okay, fine. Also, I mean, I think that would mean that Bucky would take on a full supporting role like Sam was to Steve. That's the way it would work. And I could see that working. But it better be full supporting. I want it to be clearly Sam's movie. Also, what about Sharon Carter, who's now confirmed the power broker? I think it's hilarious that bit about her phone was correct. 
She stopped using an Apple phone, so she turned evil. I love that. But anyway, will she be a villain specific to Sam Wilson? A villain that he trusts and thinks is still a hero and a close friend. Hey, maybe she's still a close friend. She's just, she's just doing business. So that's interesting. Now, speaking of Sam Wilson's specific villains, he did mention Carly 2.0 in the season finale. Who will that be? Will it still be Carly? Surely, with their huge following, which was left as something, as you know, as an important part of the show, someone's going to pick up where they left off, and I'm sure we haven't seen the last of the Flag Smashers. Now, there's also John Walker and Zemo. Plus, with Natasha's history with Steve and Sam, Yelena Belova could factor in going forward because. Well, they keep making Black Widow movies. That's an interesting question. Now, I just told you they had the Zemo end credit scene that they were gonna have here, but they've moved it to Black Widow. Zemo gets recruited for the Thunderbolts with Yelena Belova, you know, involved in that and most likely on the team. Could the Thunderbolts be featured in Captain America 4 since there are so many of the same players? I think that would be very interesting. Uh, and then also, Julia Louis-Dreyfus' new character debuted here. She was supposed to debut in Black Widow, but that makes her a Sam Wilson, Black Widow-centric villain as well. There's a lot of overlap between those two franchises, Black Widow and Captain America. So you could have Thunderbolts, Dark Avengers, something could be percolating here for sure. Now, don't forget about Isaiah Bradley. I'm sure we haven't seen the last of him. And it would make sense that we haven't because they spent so much time on him and it was time well spent. Could they afford to finally show us the flashback sequences in a movie? Oh, I would love that, please. And then also, of course, there's his grandson, Eli Bradley, who in the comics we've been discussing is a young Avenger, and he, and he deals with substance abuse issues. And I already filmed it, but I made a video about all the things that are set up in Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I was like, I don't know if Marvel's going to want to go there with, you know, uh, superhero steroids, basically, to do that storyline. But if Spellman's handling it, and he did not only was eager to embrace difficult subjects, but did it so well in Falcon and Winter Soldier, and one could argue that is part of the formula of the show's success, me being one of the people who would argue that, maybe he would do superhero steroids uh, for Captain America 4. Now, on that note, it will be very interesting for, to, for Marvel to have two black-centric movie franchises. Uh, there's Black Panther's Wakandan set stories. Now we're gonna have Captain America offering continued commentary on what it's like to be black in America and how that's seen through the rest of the world. And then also, Blade's coming. So that's, that's very, very interesting. And I wanna see how each franchise, each film franchise distinguishes itself, but at the same time complements each other. Now, uh, the Black Panther movies and Captain America films, and the show included, have a global span. And Sam does use Wakandan technology. They made his new suit. And he already had a run-in with the Dora Milaje. So I think you could see continued overlaps there. And then Spellman might also be keen to introduce more Black Marvel characters into the MCU. Like if Black Panther 2 isn't going to do anything with Storm, can we use her here? I would really trust Spellman to introduce that character. So there's a lot of potential here. And of course, how can we forget Agent Torres, who in the comics became the new Falcon, and you wouldn't introduce the character if you weren't planning to do that. So that could happen in the upcoming film. I, so again, I want to just give a shout out to Carrie Scogland, who I really feel should have a chance to direct this movie. She directed all the episodes. She was the partner. She was Malcolm Spellman's partner. And I feel it would be kind of uncool if she didn't get to direct the movie. I mean, she certainly has a lot of pra experience with visual effects at this point. I thought she had really inventive directorial choices. And I'd really like to see her get the gig. Now, I have to say, the final thing I want to leave you on is that, yes, this is a lot of material for a movie. In fact, it's so much that it would seem like it would be better for a season two rather than a two-hour movie. But I really think that it's important that Sam Wilson get his own movie. So I think it's important to do this. And Sam Wilson also doesn't have any huge storylines from the comics for Kevin Feige to adapt. So that gives Spellman and Feige a lot of room to work with here. And remember, Kevin Feige not only likes to keep things simple, but for his movies, he likes to have a big hook, be it adapting a classic story or adapting or, or introducing an exciting new character. So you're going to see less of a focus, even though it is the same team, I think you're going to see a little bit less of a focus, just a little, just a scooch, uh, less of a focus on the social issues, and they're going to have more of a big event thing to sell it as a movie. So I'm curious to see what they choose. As you can see, they have a lot to choose from. What would you choose for Captain America 4 as the hook? I think it's, it's hard to tell because we don't know what's happening in the other movies specifically just yet. We have a general idea of the direction we're headed in, 
you know, secret, inv- I mean, will this be secret invasion? That would be crazy. You can't take that from Captain Marvel. But you got secret invasion coming up. You have Dark Avengers. Thunderbolts are all on the horizon. Young Avengers. Um, there's a lot, a lot to choose from. So share your thoughts down below. Hooray for everyone involved in this show. They totally deserve it. Hooray for us for making it such a big hit and for it, it uh, for that being, that being rewarded so quickly. Share those thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now. 